A lot of people think hip replacements are for older people, but it's actually down to how much you use your hip. I'm about to meet an engineer who specializes in making really effective hip replacements so that once they're put in the human body, they never ever need to be taken out again. I'm at Leeds University to meet Arash and Gadji, whose journey into medical engineering began right here. But some 20 years later, have things really changed? Hello. Hello, hi. Great to you? see you. You too, you too. How's How it you? feel being back? Yeah, it's uh, happy memories. Yeah? Very, very nice memories, yeah. I see the hip simulator. So is that what we're looking at then? Yes, yes. So this is the uh, normal human hip Ooh. joint. So this is like... That's that. right, that's it. That allows you to move from one place to another. And also, side and... Absolutely. God, I've never actually seen this before. It's, <laughs> it's really quite extraordinary how mobile it is in so many different directions. And what this machine does, essentially, it, it is going to replicate the human gait. You can see springs applying the force. Is that simulating the upward force of the ground on a heel. Yes, we are. So, wheel strike, stance, toe off. I have to admit that I've always thought that hip replacements are for older people. Yes, that's true, but younger patients are also affected. Why would younger patients be affected? If they are engaged, you know, in, in extreme sports, top athlete that, you know, has been using his hips, various joints, you know, quite aggressively over the years. You know, you've got Andy Murray is a, is a recent example. Andy Murray has a fake hip. The good news is that he's still competing at the top level. Wow. The hip that sports people have, do they have hips that have been developed in labs like this? Before any implant um, uh, can be implanted in patients, you know, they need to be vigorously tested in, a, in the lab. You take it to the extreme, you know, scenarios. Basically, you push them to fail, and it's just these machines allow us to do that. And how long is that entire process from an idea to people actually having it implanted in their bodies? Probably around a decade. When you want to replace this uh, diseased joint, cut it from here, mm. and then you insert that stem inside the femur, and then there is this neck. On top of that, you put a femoral head. Inside here, uh, you put a socket. Well, that femoral head, head will go and sit exactly like this in there, providing that articulation. So this is an example of a ceramic head against a ceramic cup. When these two parts meet, it's so smooth and kind of fluid. Mm. What are you testing here? So here we've got a, a metallic head against a plastic cup. We see how much material has been removed as a result of the uh, articulations that you know, this has gone through uh, over time. Exactly. Are you saying that at the end of the test, you would have less material here and here. That's right. It's called the wear process. You know, the wear, it wears away. And we want to measure how much material we're losing. So initially, before we start the test, we weigh these uh, components. And then after uh, we take them apart, we weigh them again, and we will see you know, how much weight they've lost. But it's not just the hardware of the hip replacement that needs to be tested. Arash took me to another lab where they're testing the fluid that lubricates all these parts. Basically, what happens in the, in the body that, you know, um, you have a fluid that provides that lubrication uh, between, the, uh, between the joints. So that articulation is very smooth. So that's called synovial fluid. To test these implants in a hip simulator, the closest that we get to the synovial fluid is the bovine serum that I'm about to make here. We're gonna pour the entire content of this bovine serum. Where does that come from? This comes from the cow. And this is water mixed with some um, chemicals to stop bacteria from growing. Uh, it's called sodium azide. And it's the idea that this fluid then goes into your experiment and stays there for a while. That's right, yes. Here we are trying to replicate the edge loading. These implants are uh, malpositioned in a very uh, strange position. This head is hitting the edge of the cup. So we are really pushing these implants to their extreme to see 
how they fail, and if they fail, what kind of catastrophic failure we're going to get in the body. So you are on purpose joining the ball to the socket in a really terrible way to see how they behave. How, how bad they perform. That's right. What do you do today? I am the Chief Executive of Orthopaedic Research UK. It's a medical research charity based in London. Our function is to support um, scientists, clinicians. We support them with uh, their research projects. I came to Leeds University knowing little to nothing about hip replacements. And now I leave with absolute faith that engineers have got this covered. If you enjoyed this video, there's so much more to be watched. Click right here.